Hello and welcome to the CX Files podcast. I'm your host, Mark Hillary. In this week's podcast, I'm speaking with David Rumble, who's a managing partner at Go Beyond, a consulting firm based in the UK that specializes in complex CX transition work. Dave's a well-known international expert on offshore outsourcing, and he will be speaking about offshoring strategies later this month at the CX Outsourcers Mindshare event in Windsor, UK. In the podcast, I asked Dave about some of the current trends around offshoring and CX, especially the main drivers for offshoring today, and how companies are coping with different service delivery models, such as the cloud. To learn more about Dave's talk at CX Outsourcers, click the event in the podcast description. Okay, so now let's go straight to the interview where we can hear Dave at Paddington Station in London. Okay, so um, offshoring as a concept, as a management strategy, has been around for decades now. But the the focus that we've always seen is uh, around reducing costs. And so is this still one of the main drivers? I mean, are companies still making savers? And if this is perhaps not the main driver today, then what would you say is? So, yeah, I I would still agree that um, that a big part of the of the offshore proposition is is essentially around finding arbitrage benefits so moving activities to uh, obviously to lower cost locations to free up and, and get to get an economic advantage from that i think certainly over the last few years um accessing particular skills um supporting activities around centralization or to lift into skills around um, a particular sphere of expertise where some, some capabilities exist. I've got to broaden the proposition around offshore. Uh, and clearly things where, uh, from a contact centre perspective, where um, you know, customer experience dimensions and you know, some of the linguistic capabilities have, have shifted a bias as well. So accessing um, you know, premium quality services as multi-channel services um, and started to uh, started to, to bear some fruit, but I'd say still the core proposition is is predi- predicated around uh, trying to find an economic gain from from offshore. Mm-hmm. And have some of the sort of offshore centres have they almost developed into centres of excellence then? Because um, they've been doing it for so many years now. Yeah, there are yeah certainly um, we're seeing you know the development of some hubs. Um, around you know whether it's front office or back office activity or whether it's around particular customer journeys that are supporting an industry for things like travel um, for booking or for things around you know kind of more recently the um, the European legislation around um, uh, claims so there are certain certainly you know kind of these um, these areas where capability, from a business process perspective, so the full journey um, have started to emerge as, as centres of excellence. So there are there are clearly hotspots around the globe. Philippines has got some, you know, some of these kind of more generic uh, processes. India clearly, you know, very strong in the marketplace. But there are some more, you know, kind of emerging, you know, kind of back office locations in Eastern Europe, mm. as an example, where where these things are starting to get more prominent. So I think that <coughs> expertise in combination with you know, volume and, and operating services at scale provides additional economies beyond the, you know, the simplicity that I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be taking the economic benefit of a, of a lower wage rate. So, as a combination, expertise and and um, and lower cost, those two things are are starting to play through, which is great. You know, it's great for those locations. Okay, uh, and I'm interested as well then in the changes in the sort of platforms, so the way that people are purchasing services. And I suppose a good example is, you know, you know, back in the day, if you wanted a big CRM or ERP installation, you'd go to an IT company. They would give you the people and skills that they need mm. to do that. Um, but today, you might just sort of pay for it um, as you go on a sort of software as a service kind of platform. So how have things like cloud computing and the app store concept and that kind of thing, how is that changing the the way that companies are delivering services? Um, Well, there's certainly a a reshaping and emerging um, reshaping around sourcing, particularly around, um, you know, those those more generic, we'd, we'd call them, you know, IT enabled BPO. Uh, so those BPO ITS services. So there's an emerging, um, particularly you know, as you mentioned, the use of 
uh, of virtual services and cloud-based services where people are buying a business process as a service. Mm. So rather than rather than necessarily buying in, and uh, passing over the, the whole responsibility for CRM, they might just take an element of it and it might be customer registration activity, it might be provisioning, or it might be something around around the service where you've got that uh, that beep as and and there is a you know a growing a growing interest as, as clients try and de-risk around journeys, particularly as they start to plan around digitization where those two things can come together. So keeping the human in the loop and an element of that and then bringing the technology in behind um, using a um, obviously a cloud-based in, in, interface as a as an element chatbot potentially a, a level of automation and AI it just gives the visibility through through the customer journey so we're certainly seeing BPAS start to form as a category in the uh, in the emerging you know kind of the emerging outsourcing sector mm-hmm. okay. alongside alongside the more traditional CXO services and and BPM mm. uh, type services Okay. Yeah, and I was going to say, um, in terms of like customer service offshoring, there was quite a backlash. If you go back a decade or so, um, then th- there was definitely a move for many companies to, to push their contact centers back much closer to the customer rather mm. than offshored far away. I mean, is, is that still a problem or have the, the companies that are doing sourcing services, like the service providers, have they just got a lot better? Or wh- where are we now with this? Um, I think I think the well, it's too, really for me, there's two dimensions. One is the client side. There's a lot more intelligence going into understanding the implications of sourcing in in, in mixed geographies, mm-hmm. um, and so you know a mix of onshore and offshoring, um, and, and using you know using the concept of right shoring around uh, around customer contact, whether it's a core service or whether it's uh, something that might be situational, you know, where there's an uplift in, in seasonal demand. So I think there's a lot more intelligence come into client side, and a lot of that's, you know, enabled through <laughs> through things like the, uh, you know, the, those cloud services. So a lot more intelligent on the intelligence on the client side, and certain sectors are evolving more quickly in in their sourcing frameworks around those kind of make or buy positions. I think the other thing which is, <clears throat> you know, we shouldn't. Um, step away from is the supply side has definitely matured mm-hmm. as quickly and as in some cases probably more quickly to provide you know a mixed uh, a mixed topography or a mixed economy in terms of their ability to to provide a service from um, you know I guess the right the right economic envelope the right CX envelope in terms of the customer outcomes. So having these blended environments where you've got a mix of onshore, nearshore, offshore, um, as a way of um, of meeting both you know CX demand and you know kind of in terms of transactional demand has started to come through. So I think there's a growing maturity on both sides of the equation, which I think is is bringing that you know, kind of much more healthy perspective around where work should be served or is best served from in terms of uh, in terms of the customer, the end customer. Okay. Yeah. And. I suppose we could say that most companies or most large companies now just operate globally and they do have services that are spread around the world and so offshoring as a strategy is just a natural way of doing business but quite often you will hear companies talking to their supplier and saying don't mention our brand you know is it almost as if they're ashamed that they're offshoring I mean, does it still have that kind of negativity um, I think in certain sectors um, there's a, I think there's an inherent concern, and some of that is around, um, you know, natural concerns around data and the security and customer perception. Um, you know, going back to some of those early issues around, um, you know, your your <clears throat> your records for sale. So mm. I think some of the nervousness is about that. I think the, the you know the prominence of overt marketing messages saying that you're you know your customer service or your call will be handled onshore by an onshore agent. That that has now um, you know, kind of come out of the common parlance in terms of in terms of above the line messaging. So I think um, I think there's a growing recognition um, that as services as services digitise and we move into the 
you know the more virtual agent automated service that there's a you know there's a growing sense that actually um it doesn't really matter where the human really is it's the quality of the response that the human gives in managing the ownership so if i've fallen out of a of a process that is is digital and i'm expecting it to be you know a high completion rate and it arrives with the human actually the human interaction is more around the ownership so i don't think that really matters where mm. it's sourced from it's really it's the client you know the client that um, that will provide the infrastructure and the uh, and the sourcing uh, sourcing and, and knowledge environments that wrap around the agent who's providing that service so i think i think as 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 clients become more intelligent <clears throat> those kind of things will will by by virtue become less prominent i think the consumer sentiment is still you know there are still concerns about privacy there are still concerns about the security of the conversation and i think again that's a that's an issue whether it's a chatbot or whether it's a human we're uh, we're in that uh, we're in that cycle where um, you know that kind of i guess the consumer has to come with us on that on that journey as we introduce the two the two channels side by side mm-hmm. so um, yeah so i think it's a and it's exciting it's exciting time for um, for both that you know, kind of human sourcing side and also the you know the kind of the introduction to augment the experience with, with digital services yeah and i mean it seems there's a maturity taking place with the the consumers the the suppliers of services and then the way that clients are purchasing as well so i mean if you were looking one or two years out what what are the sort of key trends in the way offshoring is developing as a strategy now then well i think the um the, the kind of the notion of um, and we and we've been a long time getting to this point with you know the the, the human element really really addressing some of the more complex service needs and the notion of a knowledge worker so I think the, the, the trend <clears throat> that we would certainly see emerging around the skill of the agent a higher um, dealing with higher levels of complexity higher levels of um, of service friction, shall we say, as a consequence of, of customers falling out of a, you know, a relatively straightforward process. You know, in some certain in some circumstances, we would we would label that vicious volume. So it's a, you know, it's as a consequence of something going wrong, um, customers falling off a happy path, or alternatively, it's as a consequence of a, of a poor forecast process. So I think the trend for me is really around um, our ability to enable the frontline agent, whether they're onshore, nearshore or offshore in their ability to, to deliver a human service. So I think, you know, we're bringing, bringing that level of humanity back into the sourcing environment. So and I think those things will start to play out. Things around social sourcing, impact sourcing, the emergence of geographies as geographies become better connected. So, you know, sub-Saharan Africa as an example, using that for, uh, for, for accessing skills and capability. Language will start to play they play a part of that and the tools that wrap around the agents. So I think, you know, my view is <clears throat> we'll have knowledge and the human element that sits around it will be augmented by uh, digital assets that will be brought to bear to help the agent um, deliver the uh, deliver the service experience for, for the client. So I think that, you know, there will be an emergence of uh, some bigger outsourcers, bigger supply side, greater enabled technology enabled service, but the the crux of it will be the access to skills, the mm. humanity and the prevalence of humanity in the contact because, because of the nature of the volume that gets left behind. Thanks for listening to the CX Files podcast. Please take a moment to review the podcast because this helps other listeners to find it. And if you have any suggestions, then get in touch with me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm at Mark Hillary with two L's. Or just search Google for Mark Hillary.